it's great honor to be here. Oh, sorry. Um, as for the past couple of years, I've been looking at the maker and how maker is going to uh, change in the way things get produced. Uh, in 2014, I have the, uh, the pleasure and honors to be in the Live Shanghai uh, conference, and then we talk about makers. Uh, in the past years, we're starting to see maker is going to uh, become popular, and in this conference, we see a lot of breakup sections on makers. Uh, but as we're starting to look into the futures, uh, one thing caught our attention last year, uh, it's the as part of the Open Source and Circular Economy Day uh, events across the world with 30 CD, and we're starting to look at the e-waste problem. So I think uh, this infographics, we creating tons of e-waste, 40 million tons a year. Um, all those countries uh, rated, uh, and this is getting just increasing. And, but the interesting thing is that this, all this infographic it was created back in 2008, 2009. Uh, that's a huge outroar of the uh, people be worried about we are using too much of the, we are, we are producing too much uh, e-waste. Uh, along with that, picture like this starting to show up. This is uh, Guiyu in Guangdong, Shenzhen, in Guangdong province in China. And we're starting to see pictures like this. Uh, this is how e-waste goes. Uh, there's a huge, tremendous of human and environmental cost uh, in the disposing of the e-waste. Uh, and that's the huge outcry. I think that leads to legislations banning the, the exporting of the e-waste to China, to India, to Africa. Um, and the new alchemy gets proposed. Now we will just grind it down, melt it in, and then we will produce gold from the e-waste. And this is clean, people touring the, fa the facility. It's beautiful. But, and now we are guilty, we are guilt free. We are back to our obsessions with latest gauges, with when are we going to get our iPhone 7. But as we're starting to look at the issue, the thing has not been resolved. The EOS problem is still there. Uh, right now, getting around the banning of the export of the e-waste to developing country, it's now all goes out as donations. It all goes out as the goodwill to the developing country, sending the ITC infrastructures. But, and the big reason is the, that model of economy didn't work. Uh, grinding, down the, grinding down the ITC product and extracting raw material out of it is expensive. And it's actually uh, run against to the other part of the economy. Uh, chip fabrication, the circuitry, the circuit used inside the, inside the ITC, ICT product. Uh, they are very energy intensive to produce. Uh, they are very expensive to produce. So we're starting to look at, is there ways to retrofit this? Is there a way to fix this? Um, in the past couple of years, we have been studying this open innovation system called Sanzai. Uh, it's in China. It's mostly concentrated on the city of Shenzhen. And this is what happened in the markets. Uh, the old cell phone gets collected, gets sorted, gets back. Uh, one of the most important part, and this is how they are feeding those kind of uh, economy. That's why people are still extracting all of this uh, out of the, the uh, e-waste, is the chips. They are expensive to produce, and if you disorder them out of the system, put them back to the circulations, uh, that fetch much higher price, that fetch much higher volume, and uh, that fetch much higher revenue than what you do when you just melt it down for, for the very trace uh, amount of gold inside. And along with this system, and people starting to ask, how is this system work? Does this system work? What kind of economy scale does it create? Uh, what kind of change does it create in the global competitive scale. Uh, this is the sum of the Sanzai phone. Uh, they come in all shape, size, strange, interesting, fun, crazy, weird. Uh, but this is a real numbers. 
uh, in 2000, this is what Sanzai is occupying in the mobile phone sectors. It, long, it occupied in the long tail. And in the past 10 years, it completely changed the scale, the landscape of the mobile industry. Um, I always talk about this is the, if, let's take a time machine back to 2006. If I'm standing on stage and tell everybody, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction in about 10 years, the, the company Nokia will cease to exist. The company Motorola will cease to exist. I think Daniel will rush on stage and say, that's crazy. I mean, 2006, Nokia, that's crazy. But in reality, it went out of business uh, in 2012, less than six years. Um, what happened? The bottom-up innovation of this system, the bottom-up cooperation of this system, they fill in every single new growth possibility for the big brand, and they stop changing the, the, the trajectory of the big brand, changing the trajectory of the market, reshaping the market. Uh, right now, the top brand in the mobile market is already different from back then. And how did that happen? How did that come from this recycle? How did they come from this? Uh, it turned out the entire Sanzai ecosystem is based on these ideas of Gongban and Gongmo. What you see there is an uh, example of a smartwatch. Uh, the circuit board is public available. You can source it, the same design, you can source it from different uh, company. Uh, the case, the, the case, uh, the, the display, everything, you can source in them from multiple company. And they can be mixed and matched uh, to produce new product. They, a whole ecosystem of 30,000 company working on this. And everybody who wants to do it can come in and develop their stuff. And on top of this, because a lot of this is standardized, they get reused. They get, the, the thing gets shipped to the, the developer market, they get recycled, they get become back, they go in back to the system, and they get composite, they get, they get reconfigured, and then, well, resell them again. And that creates a very vivid new ecosystem in China, based on very much an open access, open manufacturing model, open innovation model. And this has been, in the past decades, changing the landscape of the mobile industry. Uh, and we are starting to look at, I think one of the buzzwords, one of the keywords we are hearing in this conference again and again, is the coming of the Internet of Things. It's the coming of IoT. Exactly how big it is. Uh, right now, we have, today, we have 5 billion IoT device. In five years, that's going to be 5.4, uh, going to 25 billion. And the good news is half of them is going to be created by startup uh, in the next three years. Uh, we can start to change the concept. We can start to look at where, where are those startups are going to come from. And most of them are going to come from this maker community which has already been driven by open source hardware, by internet sharing, by digital fabrications. Um, in the past 10 years, this group has been growing exponentially, and they are starting to show in their potential. And right now, it's getting political business endorsement. I mean, this is uh, the Prime Minister of China, President Obama, uh, the, the uh, Intel CEO. It's endorsing the makers. And what the maker can start to change is now they are filling up the long tail part of the, of the Internet of Things market, powered back by the Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And right now, a lot of this device, they are powered by small open source board looking like this. They are powered by latest technology. And these are very expensive chips to fabricate. Uh, and if we let this just to grind down and let it conceal it inside the box, and without being able to extract them at a bow level for reuse, which reduces most of the problem with the dirty extraction of the chips. Um, so we are proposing starting to look into how are we going to make open source uh, electronics, open source appliance be acceptable to the user, be acceptable to the innovator, and 
best of all, how do they power the next generation of startup? So we want to see this, the shadowy practice. They are not just something we should turn a bright eye on, but something we should look into and to see what went wrong. Um, second of all, we want to start in a registry with open appliance. Uh, people who does their system on open source hardware, we want to know about it, we want to promote it, uh, we want to document it. Uh, we want to be able that the recycler take, a, take out the box, grab the circuitry, and that circuitry can be resell, can be reused. Uh, there's already the challenge, uh, the customer mindset. When everybody hear about, well, my cell phone is based on the recycle circuit board, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like I'm getting the latest technology. It doesn't feel like I'm getting the latest uh, cooler stuff. But the reality is, this chip, they have become so powerful. We are actually, in the past years, we're actually starting to see the first time in the ICT sector, the latest product is slower than the last generation. Anyone with the latest MacBook Air? No? OK, well, if you look at the spec of the latest MacBook Air, it was actually slower than the last generation. We are already at the process of slowing down. We are already at the process of the ICT product is delivering new kind of experience rather than raw performance. So that's a long way to go, but I think we have a precedent before and we have a great opportunity coming out and facing a lot of innovator here. Uh, we really like to, you to think about innovating on top of the open source hardware, innovating on top of open source uh, and join the circular economy join how this gets recycled. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. How, as innovators in Europe, can we actually concretely help or contribute to that? Uh, I think right now we have a lot of the, we, I think it's a mindset change. Uh, we are really shifting from doing something with the IoT. Does that mean you have to be the latest in technology, the latest in the cutting edge technology. It's about delivering experience. It's about delivering the customer value. Uh, when we're starting to look at it like that, uh, the open source will help you in terms of the cutting down the time to market, cutting down the cost to market. Uh, and the best part is the uh, try to be proud of using open source. Don't use open source and try to hide it as a secret. Uh, and I think that's the first step uh, to starting to from starting from the innovators. And if I'm an IoT entrepreneur now, mm -hmm. can I actually go somewhere and start working with you? Yes, uh, we should be launching a website for registration soon. Okay, so we're we're expecting that. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, David. Thanks.